Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2023 Toyota Corolla hatchback in the XSE trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 225-40 Yokohama tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a gloss gray finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Inferno, which is one of the new colors for 2023. And it kind of looks like a pumpkin red or an orange red color, which is pretty neat. Depending on the angle and the, and the sunlight shining on it, that kind of thing. So here in the front, uh, it, it has a slightly different styling here in the front compared to the previous year. Now there's quite a bit of gloss black in the XSC. You can see it there in the grill. Uh, so all this is a gloss black. This is gloss black, even around the bezels here for the fog lights and inside the bezels here for the headlights as well. This is the radar adaptive cruise control sensor behind the badge. And then the headlights actually have a full night video and headlights are pretty decent. They're projector LEDs for low and high beams. There's daytime running lights, LEDs, and then reflector fog lights there at the bottom. Taking a look at the profile, this one came with the optional roof rails there. So you can see what they look like. Uh, so you can put whatever you want up there, surfboard, whatever. So here on the side, uh, it has the body colored handles, upper portion of the side mirror is also body colored. Now it has that, gray wheel which which looks okay uh, with the gloss black i suppose now this portion right here this pillar is a matte black so it's a flat black it doesn't match the rest of the gloss black on the vehicle also if it was if they would have changed that to gloss black it would kind of solidify the glass a little bit better when you tint it these roof rails are rubbery it's like a rubber surface right here uh, so that way if you, you're setting something there you tie it down and it doesn't slide or it doesn't slide as much as it would have if it's just a solid surface there. This is what the key looks like and it's a pretty typical for the modern Toyota key. Um, this one's kind of plain. It does have the lock unlock the panic button and there's a physical key on the inside as well and it's kind of a bulky key kind of gets in the way. Um, doesn't seem like it could, should be this big but um, anyways a full proximity key system and as long as you have it with you you can lock the doors by placing your hand or finger on these little sensors right here indicated by these little but these little lines that's how you lock it it's beeping because the vehicle's running so that's why it's not locking and then the to unlock it you simply put your hand behind the handle there's a sensor behind the handle unlocks the vehicle and the keys on the outside of the door there's also a physical key location here on the driver's side only Here's the inside of the passenger side door all black uh, you have gloss black and then you got the black different fabrics here and materials but there is a contrast in white stitching just a straight stitching there and there. This is all soft touch, kind of rubbery soft here. And then this is like a vinyl type material. It's called soft tech. Same thing with the steering wheel on the seats as well. Gloss black here. Uh, so there's no pocket or anything right in here. There's the switch controls. And then the bottom of the door is hard touch plastic. And then there's some compartments there as well. Now this threshold area is quite large. It kind of sticks out quite a way. So getting in and out of the vehicle, uh, this kind of gets in the way. This whole area seems to be a little bit wider than what it needs to be. Uh, I don't know if that's for aerodynamics or looks or what. But there's a little sill plate right here. It says Corolla, which is neat. Manual adjusted seat here on the passenger side. And it has the soft tax and fabric combination. It does have the contrast stitching as well. pretty decent seats uh, they don't work 100% perfect for me but uh, they're okay it's not like been a big issue or anything here's the legroom here on the passenger side floor mat does not snap or hook in place but it does stay in place pretty good because it's kind of like a velcro type material on the back side and pretty decent legroom here in the front when you have the seat um, pulled back a little ways when you put the seat back then the back seat passengers are gonna be very limited I'll show you that in a second all right, non-locking glove compartment. And this is a hard touch surface here. There's the, the glove compartment is pretty big and a smooth plastic on the inside. So we have more of that kind of rubbery soft material here, here, here. Uh, Non-reflective uh, soft touch surfaces with the stitching as well. No sunroof.
you can see the front doors uh, they swing out nicely there's lots of room headroom and everything the threshold is a little bit wide but other than that it's fairly easy to get in and out of the vehicle uh, the back door the swing of the door isn't all that great so it could make the swing of the door come out a little bit more um, also it just seems like taper here and here so it's a little bit kind of a little bit of a uh, restriction there getting in and out of this vehicle now, depending on how big you are and stuff here's the inside of the back door so we got the hard touch surfaces now this is soft touch that like soft touch material uh, but the rest of the door is a hard touch it does have a cup holder which is great and a little storage pocket there uh, really handy kind of prop your phone or whatever in there uh, but there's no pockets at the bottom a little tiny threshold area and then the back seats are basically a big bench seat but the back seats do fold down as well there's a cup holder armrest the latch system for car seats is here and it has these little plastic covers so they just kind of pop off and you know you could lose them so it's a little bit it's one of those things you got to keep track of uh, wish it would have been a little bit different but that's the way they designed it it's easy to get to the the car seat connections when you take them off though it's very easy and you have them on both sides on that side and this side for the car seats pockets on the back of both front seats as well these map pockets right here you have USB-C charge ports back here tiny hump in the back not a big not a huge deal but what is a kind of a huge deal is the leg room so this is a compact vehicle so you can see on the driver's side I have the seat positioned for me to drive and you can see how limiting it is for the rear passengers so and this one's in a I guess more reasonable position so yeah you can put adults back here but uh you know you just kind of have to make sure that's going to match your needs as far as using these back seats but they're definitely good for uh for car seats kids that kind of thing take a look at the back of the vehicle it has a shark fin antenna body colored right here in the center the third brake light is at the top of the glass in that rear spoiler there is a rear wiper and the backup camera is in a pretty good position i'm kind of surprised they have it right here in the very center and it's integrated with the badge which is nice so yeah i'm kind of surprised for a toyota a lot of times a lot of vehicles in general just have them like next to the tag and are tacked on off offset completely and not sure why they haven't you know get with the program here but this one they actually did so great so you can see quite a bit of gloss black across the back and uh kind of look has like a sporty look the taillights are all led and i think like, once again you can check out my night video these are reflectors down here not lights but there's the all the lights are enclosed here so let's go ahead and open up the hatch it's very easy it just has a little button right there in the center press that to release it this is to actually lock the vehicle it has hard plastic on the underside it does have a cargo cover as well if you have the back seats occupied with passengers this is the cargo space now you have a little bit more if you take out the shade so the shade is removable but it does a decent job of covering up your stuff so the sunlight doesn't shine on it and also people don't see it so yeah here to the left you can see there's some tie downs there and there on the right side same deal tie downs uh, there's a bag holder well this is handy to have like this little bag holder right here just kind of hook your bag right there there's a light there to the right side there's a bag holder to the left as well you can also use that for a net pocket as well so in general it's pretty decent cargo space and it's kind of you know down in there so where when you put your stuff in there it kind of like has a doesn't fall out when you open up the hatch that kind of thing uh, so this lifts up so there's a carpet there and then this lifts up it's kind of like a cardboard type floor very flimsy feeling and then it has no spare tire it has a tire inflator kit which is basically consists of a uh, tire pump like an air pump there and then this is like a sealant material um, so you can use that instead of a spare tire i suppose uh, better to have roadside assistance now you notice that this mat doesn't lay flat and you can see this little place right there that it's laying on this is kind of interesting that they designed the mat that way 
folding the seats down does add to your cargo space as well as taking out uh, that shade. So you can see that there's quite a bit of a height difference between this regular cargo area and then the actual seats being folded down. Uh, but it does give you that additional you know space there but it's not like you can just take a big box and slide it in because it's got this you know big cliff there now you notice this seat's not all the way down because that seat if it leaving it in the driving position i can't fold it down so it's uh it's just kind of leaning there which could still be handy um, but uh, you know you'd have to pull the seat up and you can fold them down flat if you needed to you really need to needed to now I've done that before like drive you know kind of scrunched up to the steering wheel trying to carry home a big box or something it has a locking fuel door and it's here on the driver's side right here and has a traditional cap tether and a little place to hang the cap here on the inside of the door while you're pumping gas and it just reuses regular uh, regular unleaded gas Starting it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, you just hold the brake and press this button. There's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat, and you notice the floor mat hooks in place on this side, not the passenger side. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, footrest here, which kind of kind of tapers there at the top. Let's take a look under the hood. Hood latch is right there. To open the hood, there is a catch right here in the very center, just like right in here, right above the badge. Just reach in, move it to the left, and then it'll lift up on the hood. Now the hood's kind of heavy, but there's the latch right there. Uh, kind of heavy on the hood. It does require a prop to hold it open. There's the prop on the underside of the hood, and it swings down and goes right where that arrow's pointing. Has a little bit of insulation there in the center of the hood. There is some seals around the engine compartment, uh, but not completely enclosed, just the front and back sealed up. You can see right there. So this is a front wheel drive vehicle, four cylinder, CVT, transmission. Battery is easy to get to right here. Uh, there's no turbocharged or any kind of fanciness. It's just kind of like a basic 2.0 liter, four cylinder engine. And you see the exhaust is in the back. So there's some heat shielding back there next to the firewall and a little bit of insulation there on the firewall, but mostly not insulated. So with a four cylinder front wheel drive, the, uh, the engine is sideways like this. So that's the front of the engine, that's the back. You and the transmission is located down here underneath that battery in that area. And then it connects to the front wheels. You actually see there's no cover on the engine, which is cool because you get to see little coil packs and just below that, you follow that down, you'll find the spark plugs. There's the dipstick, that's easy to get to. This vehicle is powered by a 2.0 liter four cylinder engine. No turbocharged or anything like that. Now it's 169 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque. Now you have to get the RPMs up there quite a ways. So the horsepower comes in at 6,600 RPMs. That's, the, that's where the maximum horsepower comes in. And then the torque comes in at 4,800 RPM. So you have to, in order to get these numbers, you have to get the engine revved up pretty high. Now, if you're just driving normally, it's not really a big deal as far as the, the acceleration. But if you really push down on it, it just kind of feels a little bit lacking because it's not really made to be like a race car or anything. It's made to be like a daily driver uh, and it drives fine just normally. Now you can, it only takes 87 octane gas, so you don't have to have any premium gas. And then you get really good gas mileage. So uh, with the XXC, XSE you get 30 in the city and 38 on the highway with a combine of 33. So this one has the blind spot detection system and the indicators there on the side mirror. And it's also the rear cross traffic alert as well. So the inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, door lock controls, power windows here. So the front, all, all the windows, front and back, are one touch up and down. You can see the back windows go all the way down as well. Same thing for the front. It's not laminated glass or anything, just regular. And then to adjust the side mirrors, you just pick a side by turning this little knob and then adjust it like a little joystick. So the driver's seat is a power seat, unlike the passenger side. So you're able to adjust the height, the tilt, and a two-way lumbar adjustment as well.
to the left of the steering column, there's the dimmer switch for the interior gauges right here. And then the automatic high beams, you can turn those off if you want to, or you can have them on. It has a, has a little light letting you know whether it's on or not. And then there's a tilt and a telescoping steering column and you lock it in place right here. I'm sitting in the driver's seat and I have the driver's seat all the way down and all the way back. I'm six feet tall to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. And it's pretty decent. Uh, it's actually not too bad. There's a little bit of this getting in the way sometimes, but it depends on how I'm positioned. But yeah, this is okay. Now the person behind me isn't getting much leg room as you saw, uh, but I do have to kind of have the seat all the way back, maybe slightly forward than all the way back. Uh, in order to drive, but you know, it's it's fine And you know if you're not as tall maybe a little bit shorter or whatever Then it will be even better the steering wheel is wrapped in that soft text type material So you can tell it's not real leather, uh, but it does feel good. It does, has a little bit of give to it Thickness is nice. Uh, so yeah, it's a not, pretty decent steering wheel The good thing about this synthetic leather is that it's super easy to clean and maintain uh, it just seems to last for a long time, and even when it gets old, when you clean it up, it just looks great again. So, uh, it's really good for, you know, longevity, apparently. I've seen a lot of vehicles that are really old with this material, and it just still looks great. So, on the steering wheel, um, you have the cruise control here on the right side. And you can see this part right here is separate from this, than the bottom part. So, you can see this part and this part right here is for the radio. So the volume for the radio, voice recognition, mode is the audio source, and then change to the tracks right here, or the radio station, depending on what you have going on. So right above that, separate deal, which is the cruise control. So you can see you use that button to turn it on. Not only do you set it and turn it on at the same time, basically. And then there's resume, which is also the increase and decrease speed. Um, and then you can change to this by default is the adaptive cruise control But if you just want regular cruise control without that adaptive part to it uh, You can have that as well Now it has the ability to once the adaptive cruise control is on to set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you And then this is for the lane tracing system so you can initiate that as well uh, So when it's when it sees the lines on the road, it kind of keeps the wheel straight in the lane and just kind of helps you drive a little bit. You still have to hold the steering wheel, but as far as you know, just kind of helping you out driving, it does a good job. It's not too intrusive and everything. Here on the left side, uh, these arrows and this OK uh, corresponds with the screen. Same thing with this back button. And then there's the button to answer and hang up on calls. So, um, so this is your Bluetooth there. So you can press that button and um, you want to make a call and then you press it again to hang up. The right stock here is the windshield wipers for the front and rear. On the left side is the turn signal, but it also has the headlight switch. So you have DRL off, automatic, parking lights, and headlights. And the fog lights are controlled here. And I'll show you all this stuff, uh, all the lights and everything and what they look like in the night video. You can check that out on my channel. The gauge cluster is pretty easy to use. Um, the engine coolant temperatures here on the left the fuel gauge is there on the right side. Uh, then in the center, there's a digital clock, outside temperature over there. Um, there's the trip, and then there's the distance to empty. Here in the center, it gives you the speedometer and the, uh, the tachometer, RPMs. And then your average miles per gallon, which is pretty cool. And then uh, what gear you're in, stuff like that. The status of your adaptive cruise control. That kind of thing. Now it does have a kilometers per hour showing up here uh, all the time, and you basically swap those when you, if you want to, in the settings. So using these buttons here, remember those. We can uh, go up and down, and when we do that, you'll see that this is this information in the center is part of a menu system. So you have different information here, uh, and we were in the first one. If you scroll to the right when when you're in that first icon, it gives you a different view. So there's an eco indicator. Scrolling down, this will be your adaptive cruise control. Scrolling to the right, a digital compass. Scrolling down again, whatever your radio is doing. Scrolling down again uh, will be a uh, your distance, so since the time you started it up. And then scrolling to the right from there will be your uh, tire pressure. Scrolling down again will be 
your your safety systems basically and you can go in there and turn that some features on or off so like say the blind spot detection system um, the lane keep assist different things like that um, and then the rear cross traffic alert can all be uh, turned on or off here scrolling to the right again will give you more of those options you also have vehicle settings in here as well press and hold the button to access that and then you can scroll through and set up the vehicle the way you want it hit the back button scroll down again this is the last icon in that list right there you notice the list goes away uh, and this will be any stored messages scrolling down again will take you back to the first icon and the, the first few that we saw so that's kind of a quick rundown of this gauge cluster yeah, it's relatively simple once you know what you're looking at basically and once you get it set up you don't have to scroll through and do anything there that's just for kind of setting it up and customizing it to your needs looking at this screen over here uh, this has the new system that Toyota has and it's relatively simple this one actually has the navigation set up uh, so you can actually see the, see the map and stuff because basically this has to, has to be set up by the owner and you have to install an app and all that stuff on your phone in order to do that so a lot of the press vehicles the vehicles that come in for people to, to review like what I'm doing now uh, doesn't have the setup and it's just like well I have no ability to set it up because I'm not the owner so I'm just kind of stuck at a screen that says you know <laughs> like the navigation reimagined screen or whatever uh, so I'm glad you're able to see it here I mean, it's nothing like super special, but it does work well. And you can do a search right here. Now it has the voice recognition that's like 10 years. It's, it's like it, it's like the 10 year old voice recognition system. It's not all that great. Um, uh, but you can go over here and pull this up and you can do some adjustments there. The next icon here is the Bluetooth right now it's set to Bluetooth but this is the audio sources there so you have the radio let's go there and then you have FM AM and then satellite radio in this this uh, choice here all right and then the next one is you set up your different phones on that icon the next one is information about your vehicle so you have trip information you notice there's a lot of screens that are useless I'm not sure why Toyota's been doing that recently maybe they'll upgrade it in a um, in an update or something where it, when you hit a button it doesn't take you to a screen in which you can already like you can there's only there's not a lot of options here you know like we can already display that in this blank spot but we have to of course hit it again and we get this information here so it just takes us to a blank screen right now because there's no vehicle alerts all right so there's the settings here and you can scroll through and adjust the ones that you want. Um, so fairly basic sim system as far as like using it. You just use the icons here on the left side, S do all your settings when you first get the vehicle and you know, you just use the navigation as you need it. And then once you get your, um, your device paired, you know, it's really easy to use it. Uh, I haven't had the connection issue I have at, had with other Toyotas and Lexuses for some reason on this car, so that's good. Um, but it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. So if you'd like to use them, uh, you can connect that wirelessly uh, to the system. So I'm not really a fan of those programs, but I know a lot of people are, so that's, that's a good thing to have, especially the wireless. Okay, so the climate control is down here, and it's a dual zone driver and passenger temperatures you can sync them which is synced right now so we're going to adjust the temperature there and it adjusts both of them fan speed uh, where you want the air to blow and then you have the front rear defrosters also the rear defroster turns on the heated side mirrors as well recirculate the air that kind of thing pretty basic pretty simple straightforward all right so below here is a wireless cell phone charger now with my phone I have the larger phone and with the case on it, it doesn't really fit in there all that great the case doesn't stick out that far but it's just slightly I, I guess most phones would probably fit in there it's just kind of like tucked away 
and it doesn't give you much extra room you know it could be a little bit bigger i think because a lot of phones are big now so i think most phones would be fine but just something to think about if you got a huge phone this might not even be uh, useful to you now it does have heated seats here in the front it has a high and low for both the driver and passenger now it has the drive modes right here this is the traction control uh, default is on you can turn it off if you need to spin tires and then here's the drive mode um, so as you scroll through you can see it here on the screen eco normal and sport and uh, with the CVT transmission it doesn't seem like it's it's for me it's not that useful to use sport mode or maybe eco if you're just kind of cruising around and you don't really care about uh, you know speed or whatever that might help a little teensy weensy bit but uh but the normal drive mode is already fine i mean it works good you get good gas mileage uh, you have power when you need it and it's fine it also has the eco heat and cool so when we turn that on it's going to diminish the heating and cooling system a little bit uh, to save energy you know basically it's to save gas ultimately but it's just a teensy weensy bit all right, so there's the shifter. Let's go ahead and put the shifter in reverse. And we can see what the backup camera looks like. Pretty good. It's in a good location. See a little bit of bumper. You can see from the bumper to the sky and all the way around. Uh, and it has the um, static guidelines. There's not active uh, right now. But it looks pretty good. I mean, the resolution's okay. It's not too bad. You can actually see behind you. It fills up the screen pretty good. You know, so you don't have a lot of emptiness. Now, you do have, like, this huge bezel on the screen, which is kind of funny looking. But uh, as far as, like, the, you know, utilizing the screen to, for, the, for the image, it's utilizing it all. All right, continuing on. There's neutral. There's drive. And then you have a what's a manual drive, a manual mode. Now this doesn't have gears; it has speed ratios for the CVT transmission. So when you put it over here, you're able to bump it like a ratchet shifter, and it simulates ten gear ratios. Uh, so it kind of like has the has these stepped ratios that are similar to you know gears when you're when you're going. So basically, uh, you can use that or you can use these pedal shifters so it has a plus and a minus here on the back of the steering wheel and uh, so this is handy for the most of the time this type of thing is handy when if you're going down a steep hill and you need some engine braking uh, so you can go ahead and downshift that's really what the the main purpose of these type of uh, step control over the ratio of the transmission normally you just drive it like this all right, so there's the cup holders, different sizes there for different size cups. And then there's an auto hold. Uh, so basically when this is turned on, um, when this is turned on, when you come to a complete stop, it will hold the brake for you until you, acceler until you hit the accelerator and then it will release the brake and allow you to go forward. So this is kind of handy when you're at a stoplight for a long time or a stop sign or whatever the case may be. Uh, some people find it handy. Uh, this is electronic parking brake. Uh, to engage it, you lift up on it. To disengage, you hold the brake the pedal over here, and then you press it down like so, and it releases it. And it engages the rear wheels. Most vehicles do, but just want to point that out. Okay, so this is the armrest, and it's like it has a soft surface, but like three millimeters below that is like a really hard plastic. This slides forward as well. And it's kind of small. You're not going to really share it with your passenger. But it lifts up. There's a latch right here. It lifts up. And it slaps back down when you let go. It's not like spring-loaded or anything. But you can go all the way back here and it'll stay there. Uh, and then there's the storage compartment. It does have a 12-volt power supply and a USB-C charge port. It is backlit, the charge port. And you notice these little places for wires to go in and out of this compartment here and here. It's a good thing because kind of slaps down it might pinch your cord or something all right up here is the uh, rear view mirror and it has a manual day and night mode and then you have the lights here for the driver the passenger turn on all the lights and have them turn on with the door if you don't want that to happen you just press it and it pops out that way you know when you open the door 
interior lights don't turn on. This is handy if you have a baby <laughs> and the baby's sleeping. So uh, that's one reason. And now there is a roadside assistance button here as well. It's covered up so you don't accidentally hit it. The visors are like a vinyl plastic EU type material. And then the headliner is a felt, like a black felt fabric type material. Um, now this opens up and you have a mirror and then the light turns on when you open the mirror. It has, um, instead of the sliding visor, it has this little extension. So you're adding to their coverage, which is nice. Uh, it's been, it's helped out a lot. <laughs> that little extra addition there. Looking at the visibility there on the back, uh, you can see the headrest kind of diminished the visibility a little bit. Uh, so it depends on uh, your needs, but you could fold those seats down when you're not using them kind of help out because they kind of connect with the the pillars in the back and so they kind of add this additional blind area now this one in particular does have the blind spot detection system and an, a decent camera system uh, so it kind of helps out with driving the vehicle which I really has haven't had a problem like just kind of looking over my shoulder and then looking in the side mirrors here uh, the visibility has been okay rearview mirror it's been fine. I mean, I hadn't really had an issue um, with visibility, but you know, depending on your needs and your experience and all that stuff. This is one of those all around good vehicles for a lot of people. Uh, you're able to cruise around town with ease with a small car like this. Uh, you have decent amount of passenger space. Highway travel is fine uh, and you're nice and stable on the road at high speeds. Right now we're going 72 and it just feels, it feels good. You do have some extra just noises from wind and some, a little bit of road noise, that kind of thing. Um, but I don't hear the engine whining, which is good. It does whine when you accelerate, but as far as just kind of cruising along like this, I don't hear it at all. I just hear the wind noise and some road noise, which is pretty typical for you know a lot of vehicles this size and, and everything, this price range. Now the CVT transmission, um, the CVT transmission has some simulated ratio changes, uh, gear ratio changes, but you know I think it would be better without that. But it's not a really a big deal. Uh, it does allow you to up and down shift, so I can downshift now. So it goes up to 10 gears, and I can downshift using the paddle shifters. I press and hold the plus to go back in the drive, uh, but. As far as just like normal driving, you wouldn't use those unless you need some engine braking going down the hill, basically. But just normal driving around, and that's what this vehicle is. It's not like this high performance sports car. Uh, it is not a, you know, like a big, you know, lumbering SUV. It's just kind of one of those, kind of a compact car that you can zip around, get to work, pick up your groceries. Uh, pick up the kids at school or whatever, you know that kind of thing. It, it's 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 very practical type vehicle And it's hard to beat it really is hard to beat the Corolla uh, for years now the Corolla has been renowned uh, for a just a small inexpensive economical as far as like you know fuel economy that kind of thing and It's uh, just longevity. I mean it just they just tend to last forever <laughs> 
Uh, it's amazing. People neglect them and they just keep on going. I don't recommend neglecting them, but you know, there's I, I see it often these type of vehicles where they just keep driving and driving and driving. Very little maintenance. So, yeah, it's it's. I think this is a good vehicle for a lot of people. I mean, it is relatively fun to drive. The acceleration, it's not an exhilaration, it's not exhilarating acceleration or anything, but when you stomp it, when you really push the accelerator really hard, uh, it just kind of doesn't feel that great. But when you're driving it normal, you're just normal driving in the normal RPM range, it feels fine. You know, it just kind of like, it is designed for normal driving. It's not really designed for extreme revving and, and acceleration and all that. So, you know, just keeping the pedal in the in the medium range and just driving normally is is great. Uh, and it, it's just an easy vehicle to drive as well. I think it'd be good for beginner, like a beginner drivers um, as well. Because it's not super huge vehicle and it's easy to park, it's easy to back up. Um, it's it has decent visibility and of course this one has the blind spot detection system and the backup camera and all that stuff so it's affordable easy to drive and relatively comfortable I mean if you're really you know like it depends on how these seats feel with you and you know the overall if you can get in the vehicle and then you sit down for a little while and you feel fine then you'll probably be fine with it I uh, hadn't really had an issue. I mean, it's not like 100% perfect, but uh, for me, anyways. But um, I, I think most people will have no problem with it, even on a, on a short trip or something. You know, a few hours in the vehicle like this, I, I don't, I don't see how I would have much of a problem with it. As far as the drive modes, um, the Sport, it just, all it does is hold a higher RPM and try to keep you closer to that uh, that ideal acceleration RPM range. And it doesn't really do much for me. I mean, no, usually Sport modes are not all that great. Uh, so, and then the same thing with the Eco. It just feels like really weak. It doesn't feel very responsive at all. Uh, but the normal mode is fine. You know, drive modes typically, unless there's a reason for the drive mode, like an all-wheel drive system and, you know, off-roading or, you know, sketchy <laughs> sketchy uh, surfaces that you're on, slippery or whatever, uh, then, you know, it just, it's a little gimmicky to me. I think most people would be satisfied with a vehicle like this. Uh, a lot of people, anyway. Now, it depends on passenger space. I think that's the, the limiting factor here, is that if you if you need more passenger space in the back so let's say you got adults that you're carrying in the back seat regularly uh, and you know or you know multiple kids that are growing you know this might not be the best thing as far as the room back there especially if you're a tall driver and then you have to push the seat back a lot there's very little room back there now when I'm sitting in this seat so keep that in mind the cargo area is fine the hatch is great makes it easy to put groceries and get things in and out and the cargo area is kind of recessed recess down into the floor so everything kind of stays in this nice little nice little little cubby there and it's it's roomy it's fine it's, it's it's hadn't had any problem with trying to fit stuff in there So let me know what you think about the Corolla if you've owned a Corolla in the past because I know a lot of people have. And what do you think of the new style that, that they have now? Uh, they did a slight refresh, I mean just very slight refresh here in the 2023 model uh, with the front and rear look of the vehicle. Uh, but Toyota tends to have co very conservative changes typically. They, they try to keep the same thing for a long time when they get a reliable vehicle and it's it's been in the market they just keep it in the market and just keep running with it so uh, th so this one's been out for several years this 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 style uh, Corolla 
and it's been a hit. A lot of people have liked it, including me. I, I do like the, the styling of the new Corolla, and it's a great little vehicle. Hard, hard to argue with a Corolla. A lot of people, a lot of people have owned them, and most people really like them. Farce, I mean, I think the biggest thing really is the reliability. I mean, that that just you, that it just makes it so much better. I mean, if you have a vehicle that you really like, but then it's like breaking down or giving you trouble, then you tend to not like it very in a, very shortly. Uh, but a vehicle like this is kind of like. Not nothing really stand out super special. It does get decent gas mileage and stuff. It's not really fast or anything, and it's but it's just you can rely on it. You get in it and you drive it, and it's just old reliable type vehicle. So uh, that's that's to me that's one of the best value propositions: the reliability, the fuel economy, and also buying them. You can buy them relatively inexpensive, typically. Uh, they do hold their value used, so sometimes it's, it, depending on the market, sometimes it's better just to buy a new one. Um, but, you know, of course it depends. Thank you for watching, and if you have any comments, questions, I'll have a separate video with the test drive and also that night video. Go check it out, it's really cool. Uh, so thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.